While we are waiting for the pressure over there to be 5 multiplied by 10 minus 5, we can turn on our beam here. Right now you can see the beam is 50 kV. Usually this microscope works on 200 kV. So you double click here, this window will appear and put the HV on. So you should see the increase on the KV here after a while. It takes like two or three minutes to reach the 200. Now it's rising up. Okay, let me talk about uh, things that we have here. Let me close everything and I'm assuming that you reach your microscope like this. So, on the first tab here after the save button, you can choose your operation mode. Operation mode on this microscope is normal, EDS, high resolution, ultra high, decan, and nano diff. The main three that you may use them during your analysis is normal, high resolution ultra high resolution and non diff. What you do, what is difference between these? Usually with less resolution you have a bigger spot size, more signal, but then again your resolution is lower than the other. So comparing normal and ultra high, on normal your spot size will be bigger, but your resolution is less compared to ultra high resolution, as its name says. So you are changing the spot size of your analysis. Sometimes if your sample is not thin enough, then you need to increase your spot size, giving more energy to the beam in order to take or have any image with the stem because it's not a reflection, it's a transmission electron. It's depending on the sample. Usually we start with high resolution and if we saw it's necessary, we switch to normal or ultra high resolution mode. So let's choose high resolution from here. There are two sub modes that you can select, Z contrast or D contrast. Uh, Z contrast basically is the same as backscatter on SEM imaging. So if you have two region of your two region, if you have a coding on your sample or you have different com compositions or you have any contamination inside your samples and there is a difference in density or atomic number, you will see in different contrast when you are using your Z contrast mode. Uh, from up here you can see you have, you can do secondary electron image, you can have Z contrast, and you can have TE, transmission electron. There are three choices for you. One is secondary, which is basically is the same as scanning electron microscope, and the other one is a Z contrast, like a backscatter image that you usually have on the SCM. So that's a dark field image and the TE is a uh, bright field image. So I can see if you check over there it's oh, it's past 5 uh, by 0.5 is the time that I can turn on the G-lock. So right now I can turn the G-lock on open position. So it's open my beam voltage is 200. I have choose high resolution operation mode. Again, it's your, if, you know, it's, if you are familiar with electron microscopy, you have different scanning speeds. You, know, you can choose your speed of scanning with different scanning speeds that you have. And usually you use the fastest one for navigation. So that's what I'm going to do right now. This is fast one. It's good for navigation. I will unpause the beam, then go up. So I choose, I use the magnification knob, decrease the magnification, and by this knob, I can navigate on the sample. All right? So usually, TM grid looks like this. So these are your windows, and this is your copper grid. And these are the meshes between them. If you go and zoom in inside, you start to see if, in this case, we have a polycarbon coated in one side, so we start to see the polycarbon structure. Uh, 
I need to focus on it, so I have a coarse and I have a fine button. I will try to focus better on my sample. So what I did, I just turn it a little bit. Again, increase my magnification. If you took a look over there, yeah. Okay. I'm using my yeah, using my knob here and increasing my magnification and then I can use my focus knob to focus better on the sample. Okay. Now we can start and calibrate the, and align the microscope. To do so, it's better to start around 50K. So find a location that you have features on it, and usually you start with the SCM mode. Right now we are on the SCM mode. And I find a location that I have enough features for the software to calibrate uh, the microscope and align the microscope. So let's start from, you know this one, so we go for this one. The second one is alignment mode. Aperture alignment, make sure the beam is passing through exactly the center of the column. So turn it on. It looks like this. Depending on what aperture you use, you can change your aperture here to number one by turning it, number two, number three, and number four. Usually number two is good for imaging, and number four is when when you are reduced your again you are reducing the size of your beam. If you are doing nano diff or you are doing lattice imaging, maybe number four is better for you. But usually we start with number two. As you can see, the aperture is not exactly on the center. By rotating these two knobs on the aperture, I can bring that to the center. So let's do that. Yeah. It's center. Okay. Good enough. I can turn this off. Now I can go to the third one, which is this window. Auto alignment moved, starting from second SE alignment. So make sure. You focus on your sample. Reset all the lenses by pushing these two buttons. Okay, before you go to the alignment, one thing that you need to make sure is your Z height. Because the only way that you can change your working distance is from here. And you want to make sure your working distance is right. So, reset the lenses by pushing these two buttons. Then, by using this knob, rotating this knob, try to focus and bring back your working distance to the right position. See, I'm on 35K. I can increase my magnification again by using this knob. A little bit different from the SCM that you can change your working distance. Here, you just, it's fixed. So you need to be, you have a, you don't have enough freedom to change your working distance while you are doing your focus by using the knobs. All, so you need to be very close to the focal point of the lenses. So that's why it's very important to adjust your Z height. Now zoom out. Now SE alignment. I can start. Make sure your brightness and contrast it's good so you have an area of image Everything is looks fine. You have features on the screen for the software to pick them up and align the microscope. Right now that's 80. I can do one for like 200. Start again. I didn't see any error or any message from the system. If, I, if there is a problem, you will see an error here. And then you can tur uh, troubleshoot that by this table. See right now, 52.49. 52.49, issue because in an image is not focused or its contrast is low to visualize field is not appropriate. Okay, so we do auto brightness and contrast.
Now zoom in a little bit and try to focus better. And now go back. Around 100 should be okay. 100. Start off. One more time. It's fine. Now go back to 50. Now we are going to align the correct the astigmatism. Choose the astigmatism. Start again. Now I can increase it to 100, start again, we are doing it on low and high back, on high mag, make sure the astigmatism is corrected, your SC is aligned, after we correct the astigmatism, it's the time that we do our bright area centering. Usually this automatic feature not work, we need to do it manually. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, we are done with this, we close this. Now we switch to the TE mode. Zoom out. Use the area marker, then put this BD on DL, and then right now you can see that D alignment is on. So these two are controlling the deep detector alignment. We are going to align the detector. So you can see I'm moving by these two, this circle, and I need to bring it exactly to the center of the screen. After that, the detector is aligned. Take out the area marker and make sure you put this back to stigma. So that's, these two are controlling the stigmatism. Now I can zoom in. Now the microscope is aligned. You can start your imaging. However, it's better to check your astigmatism, which is one of the most difficult alignment in STEM, either by uh, ringogram, or by using the carbon, uh, amorphous carbon on the grid to align the astigmatism. I will show you this on the next uh, video.